as Svetlana just has told, my paper will in some sense be continuation of the previous talk, but it will also mention the name of Ambedkar, but it will focus on different things. In western part of Nagpur, one of the largest cities in the Indian state of Maharashtra and the geographical center of India, there is an area of about 14 acres, which is called Diksha Bhumi, the name which means place or land of conversion or edification. And this name refers to an event that took place here on October 14 in 1956, the day Bhimrao Ambedkar converted to Buddhism together with approximately 600,000 of his followers. The ceremony became the most massive religious conversion in the history of mankind. In this way, the participants renounced Hinduism and their belonging to the untouchables or Dalits. Thus, the action, which was religious in form, became an act of social protest against the inevitability of inherited inequality legalized by the dogmas of Hinduism. So social activism has taken the form of religious conversion. Maharashtra, as it was already mentioned, was the main platform for Ambedkar's anti-caste and later anti-Hindu propaganda. And it was there that Ambedkar had tremendous support in the form of a powerful grassroots movement among the Mahars who, who constituted the majority of the Maharashtrian untouchables. From this point of view, uh, the city of Nagpur was also important, but only one of many places of such activity. The ordinary position of the city was evidenced by the fact that in 1954, Ambedkar publicly proclaimed Mumbai as the venue for the ceremony of converting to Buddhism. The right to provide a site for the ceremony was also claimed by other places, including Delhi. Later, Ambedkar changed his mind and chose Nagpur as a platform for the culminating event because the city demonstrated the, an undeniable advantage over competitors. The city appeared to be connected with the Buddhist tradition. And it was on this connection that Vaman Rao Gadbole, one of the active participants of the Dalit movement in Nagpur and the organizer of this conversion ceremony, began to focus his attention. And as his younger associate, Vasant Moon, wrote in his autobiography, Gadbole's study of Buddhism was deep and detailed. He had brought a very important book from Mumbai titled The Life of the Buddha by Edward G. Thomas. Here I must make a, a small digression and mention that by nature of my interest, I do not deal with Ambedkar or Dalit movement. My interests are rather related to history, mainly the colonial history of Central India and Nagpur, and among others to such topic as uh, how various spaces, including urban ones, were formed in the process of historical development. Having discovered a large territory in Nagpur, which is the place of attraction of the thousands of Buddhists every year, I wondered how it happened that an alternative religious tradition took root in a city where it didn't exist until the mid of the 20th century. And uh, this paper reflects my attempts to restore the logic that connects the locality with the Buddhist uh, tradition. Uh, the name of the city uh, of Nagpur is translated as the city of snakes. Uh, Thomas's book, which Gadboli brought from uh, Mumbai, contains references to a semi-divine people of Nagas who were uh, half snakes half humans and headed and headed by snake kings revered uh, both in Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism. For example, among the various stories was the participation of the Nagas. In the Mahabharata, there is a story of the Khandava forest, which was burnt down by the heroes Arjun and Krishna, and where the Nagas with their snake-like ruler Takshaka lived. Uh, this episode marked the beginning of the enmity between Nagas and Pandavas. Another episode tells of the death of Parikshit, the grandson of Arjun, from the bite of Takshak. In revenge, the son of Parikshit, King, uh, King uh, Janmajaya, 
make a snake sacrifice with the intention of destroying all of them. Astika, the son of the sage Jagatkaru and Manasa, the goddess of the Nagas, and the sister of Vasuka, another king of the Nagas, came to their aid and stopped the reprisals, preventing their complete extermination. While the Puranas, Mahabharata, Ramayana, and other texts tell of mythical creatures, uh, some researchers uh, tend to see in these stories evidence of the existence of the real ancient people of non or pre of non or pre aryan origin, with a wide range of settlements from modern Nagaland all the way to central India and Sri Lanka. The search for historical background began in the 19th century and continues to this day. Uh, thus, in the 19th century, uh, James Ferguson, in a book devoted to the cult of serpent worship in, in India, which was based on the analysis of the remains of stupas in uh, Sanchi and Amaravati, wrote, uh, we are almost entirely ignorant uh, regarding the different races who inhabit the vast central plateau of India, on whose outer edge these two tobes were uh, uh, erected. And we ne uh, neither know, know uh, whence they came nor when they settled in their present locations. Meanwhile, it is curious to observe that as a straight line drawn from uh, Takshala, which was one of the metropolis of serpent worship in, and the sport, uh, hence uh, it spread all over India, to Amaravati passes through Bhisla, Nagpur and other, local uh, and other localities uh, where snake worship was especially prevalent. It does look like the central line of such migration. If any such ever took place, it was long uh, anterior to Buddhism, possibly before or in consequence of the great war celebrated in the Mahabharata. Another researcher, uh, John Dawson, in his Dictionary of Hindu Mythology writes, the Nagas or the people bearing the same name are historical and had left many traces behind them. Kings of this race reigned in Madhura, Padmavati, uh, etc., and the name survives in the modern Nagpur. There are various speculations as to who and what they were, but it seems clear that they were a race distinct from Hindus. The mythological accounts are probably based upon the historical, but they have been mixed up together and confused. The favorite theory is that they a Sithic race and probably obtained their name from worshipping uh, serpents or holding them in, uh, or, uh, in reverence. Uh, this connection of the people of the Nagas, both myth mythical and historical, with the lands of Nagpur was very important since in accordance with Buddhist tradition, after their salvation uh, of the Nagas, they became followers of the Buddha. Uh, Nagas were not only worshippers of the Buddha, but also important figures in the life of a teacher. For example, the king of the Nagas, Muchalinda, covered the Buddha with his snake hood while meditating under the Bodhi tree uh, from rain and storm. Uh, uh, Naga, uh, Nagas played even more important role uh, in the preservation of Buddhist um, relics. Uh, after uh, Buddha's uh, Parinirvana, one of eight pieces of his body rel uh, relics was stored in the city of Ramagrama, or Ramagram, under the protection of the kings of Nagas. When several centuries later, the king Ashoka from the Mauryan dynasty, who began to spread Buddhism, conceived the idea of extracting relics in order to distribute them among the 84,000 stupas built by him, he couldn't get to that uh, one in Ramagram uh, and it remained intact because the serpent king rose to its defense. Later, it was washed away by the waters of the Ganga in, into the ocean, from where all the same Nagas transferred the bow with relics to the possession of King Kalanagi in Manjerika. He erected a stoop of precious stones over the relics 
and together will, uh, with other Nagas worshipped them. Restoring uh, in, uh, the ancient geography of India, uh, Alexander Cunningham, who was the founder of the uh, Archaeological Survey of India, believed that Manjarika was located in the eastern part of the sub continent uh, between the Godavari and Krishna rivers. In his opinion, the, uh, the urn with the ashes uh, could have been stored in the uh, town of Dharanikota near the modern city of Amaravati, where during archaeological surveys and exca excavations in 1816 and in 1845, the remains of a huge stupa uh, were uh, discovered. And uh, it was from uh, this place the ascetic Sonatara uh, took uh, this uh, urn to Sri Lanka. So these stories are just examples demonstrating the role of Nagas uh, in preservation of Buddhist uh, relics. In addition to eight pieces of Bodhi relics, Mahaparini Banna Sutta, one of the suttas of the sacred collection of Buddhist texts uh, of the Pali Canon, describing the last uh, days of Buddha, uh, mentioned four Buddha's teeth. Three of them had clear territorial localization. The first went to heaven, the second to Ganhara, uh, a region in the northwest of Hindustan, and the third uh, to uh, Kalinga, the present day Orissa, uh, an ancient state with its capital in uh, Dantapur. But the location of the last tools has not been determined, and it was just said that it's still. Uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the Naga Raja's Puna. So the mention, uh, uh, the mention in the uh, Mahapari Nirvana Sutra, an independent Sanskrit text, that the fourth tooth ended up in Ramagrama, uh, just confirms that th this tooth was protected and honored by the Nagas, but does not clarify its location after the stupa was washed uh, was washed away. John Strong, uh, the author of the book Relics of the Buddha, states that the fourth tooth is least known uh, about. And this ambiguity with the location of the fourth uh, uh, tooth uh, allows the modern researchers to uh, transform a dental relic uh, which does not have an exact, uh, an exact topographic reference from a tooth honored by the Nagas into a tooth that ended up in the land of Nagas. It is the land of the Nagas as the place of storing of the fourth tooth uh, that appeared in the monumental work of P. V. Bapata, uh, two, and a uh, two and a half thousand years of Buddhism, published in May 1956 on the occasion of the anniversary date. In a later Marathi language book uh, by Kosare, the author, uh, writes about Nagabhumi, again, land of Nagas. And finally, uh, Naval Viyogi, author of the book Nagas, Ancient Rulers in India, set out to determine where the land of Nagas was, uh, uh, where the false tooth uh, was kept. A complex chain of uh, reasoning and comparisons of various stories led him to the conclusion that it was not uh, Kali, Kalinga or Manjerika, but a separate territory. Archaeological data allow him uh, to relate uh, this land to Vidarbha, a territory in central India, uh, the main city of which are, is modern Nagpur. By the time Viyogi began his re uh, research, many megalithic uh, monuments associ associated with the Nagas were discovered in Vidarbha. Based on the archaeological evidences, Viyogi proceeded uh, from the fact that stupas were built over all Buddhist relics, the remains of which were somehow found in the places listed, listed in the Sutra of Sutas, or Sutta. And this meant that there had to be a corresponding building above the fourth tooth as well. As such, he considers the stupa in uh, Pauni, a place at uh, 82 kilometers from Nagpur, the remains of which were, were found during the excavations in 1969-1970. The size of this structure was larger than the stupa in Sanchi, so it was a Maha stupa, or great stupa, which testified to its importance. Uh, the time of its construction is attributed to the pre-Maurian period, 
uh, which, uh, which could mean that Buddhism and Vidarbha region did not appear uh, during the uh, proselyt uh, proselytizing activities of, of Ashoka, but much earlier during the life of the Buddha, and the, the tooth was brought here immediately uh, after the Buddha uh, performed Parinirvana. As a result of these constructions, the territory of Nagpur claimed uh, the right to be part of the sacred geography of Buddhism. First, because a once glorious people of Nagas lived there, the people which was inextricably linked with the name of Buddha defended and preserved his relics. And second, because one of these relics may have been there. Uh, this gave the city a reason to start uh, acquiring new rituals, traditions, and objects of worship. In uh, 1952, uh, uh, the Nagpur Mahars, who by that time had already annually celebrated Ambedkar's birthday, decided uh, to also celebrate the Buddha's birthday. On this occasion that year, uh, a huge procession was organized, starting from Sitabaldi, the place of compact uh, residence in, uh, of Mahars in Nagpur, and covering other uh, areas of the city. One merchant presented uh, the Mahara community with a four-foot four uh, uh, statue of Buddha made of salmon, uh, which was installed on the territory of the uh, Hindu temple. And in front of the statue, the Mahars, they began uh, to perform uh, the puja. So therefore, Gadboli, uh, in a letter to Ambedkar, defending the advantages of Nagpur over Mumbai as a venue for the ceremony, focused not on the active participation of the city in the uh, Dalit movement, which many places could boast, but on its Buddhist past. Uh, Moon uh, quoted an excerpt from uh, Gadboli's letter to Ambedkar. Uh, he wrote, there is no way of telling on what basis you chose Mumbai. It has no place in the history of Buddhism. If the choice had been made for one among the holy places of Buddhism, we would, have, we would have had no objection. So you should reconsider your decision and chose Nagpur. There is a mention in one book of a tooth of the Buddha's being in Nagpur. In interview, the day after his conversion, Ambedkar, explaining his choice of Nagpur as a place of the first ceremony, also referred to the mentioned myth of the extermination of the Nagas and their happy salvation. He said, why Nagpur was decided upon for this work? Why didn't the conversion take place in other city? Those who read Buddhist history will come to know that in India, if anyone spread Buddhism, it was the Nag people. The Nag people were fearful enemies of the Aryans. Agasti Muni helped only one Nag man to escape from that. We spring from that man. Those Nag people who endured so much suffering wanted some great man to raise them up. They met that great, that great man in Gautam Buddha. The Nag people spread the teaching of Bhagwan Buddha all over India. That's well like Nag people. It seems that the Nag people live chiefly in Nagpur and the surrounding country. So they call the city Nagpur, meaning the city of Nags. This is the main reason for choosing this uh, place. In uh, 1978, Nagpur already, in the literal sense of the word, uh, stuck out its place on the sacred geographical map of Buddhist Hindustan. Uh, when the foundation of a stupa, Diksha Bhumi, was laid on the wasteland where the conversion took place. Built by the beginning of the 20th uh, first century, it uh, was modeled after the example of stupa in Sanchi, and it is one of the largest similar buildings in the world and the largest hollow stupa. Uh, the, Buddha, uh, the Buddha's tooth is one uh, of the most uh, famous and revered relics in the entire Buddhist world, which became the object of the passion of many rulers and gradually gained weight as a state relic, thus legitimizing the power of those who possessed it. Likewise, uh, the spaces that the tooth crossed received grounds to be considered sacred and to claim special attention or position. A narrative based on mythical history and scientific research data established the connection between wandering holy objects, migrating snake-like people, and Nagpur. 
it actualized the symbolic capital of the city hidden for the time being, which promoted the city to the position of the center of a new social, social religious tradition, turned it into a place of accumulation, specific uh, ritual and pilgrimage practices, uh, iconographic images and material objects. And if you open the Wikipedia page on the sacred Buddhist sites in India, then in Maharashtra, in addition to Elora and Ajanta, the Nagpur Diksha Bhumi is now also mentioned. And in order to dispel all doubts as to whether there was ever a Buddhist relic in Vidarbha, in 2015, on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of the, of the conversion of uh, Buddhism, uh, the, uh, the Buddhist relic uh, came uh, from, was taken out of uh, Sri Lanka and exhibited in India at Nagpur. An estimated 5 million worshippers were expected to arrive in Nagpur to venerate the relics. Uh, however, these figures were far exceeded. Over 8 million people paid homage. So this is all what I wanted to say. Thank you very much for attention.